in World War II, or in tanks in general, you always think of tanks like the Tiger, Panzer IV, or the T-34, but there's one tank that a lot of people never heard of. The SU-122. The SU-122, described in a few words, is a T-34 chassis that means a howitzer. Yes, that is very true. The SU-122 is a T-34 chassis with a howitzer. While we go through the video, we will go through several checkpoints. Battles, history, and design. Well, to not waste any more time, let's get to the battle section. Due to how the German Stug and other anti-tank weapons performed, the Soviets were interested in the design of the Stug, and then later gave the command to get its design in, and its production to be started. Now, as I know you're probably going to have some questions, you may ask yourself this. Why not a tank with a turret? And to answer that question, it's because casemates are significantly cheaper to produce than turreted vehicles. Before starting production, the Soviets get a base tank, which at the time was T-34, and then converted it to have a 45 degree sloped armor with 45 millimeters of armor as well. After a series of tests and redesignations, the final name was SE-122. Over the process of the tests, they modified the SE-122 with vision slots being removed, a commander periscope being added, and he even re renovated the inside of the tank. In the start, in December 1942 to the summer of 1944, 1,100 to 1,200 units were produced, with an amount of 100 each month. The production version of the SU-122 featured 45mm armor at basically any surface, but for the front glacis it used 45mm armor at a 50 degree angle, and for the lower glacis, 45mm armor at 21 to 69 degrees for the lower glacis. The sides included even weaker armor at 45mm armor at a 17 to 41 degree angle, and 45mm below the hull above the tracks. For the rear, it is also 45mm as well at 47 degrees. And for the bottom of the rear, it is 45mm at 48 degrees. The roof is surprisingly 20mm thick and isn't at any degrees of a slope. The whole tank is in rolled homogeneous armor except for the gun mantlet and the driver's hatch that is cast in homogeneous armor. The SU-122 never had any mass-produced variants except for only two, the SU-122M and SU-122-3. To start off, let's start with the SU-122M. The SU-122M is an improved version of the SU-122, just if it had a different howitzer. The howitzer was the D-11 howitzer, a variant of the U-11 howitzer, and the SU-122M had an individual driver hatch just for the driver. The SU-122M wasn't put in production in favor for the SU-85, a SU-class SPG with the 85mm cannon found in the T-34-85. 
Now to the last SU-122 variant, the SU-122-3. The SU-122-3 is another attempt to make an improved SU-122. The tank combined a SU-85 chassis with a 122mm cannon. Let's just say that it did not work at all. The recoil system and the poor anti-tank abilities caused the SU-122-3 just to be another failed attempt. The first SU-122 that came off the line in December 1942 went to training camps in the 1433rd and 1434th propelled artillery regiments. In January of 1943, the two regiments were sent to the Volkhov Front near Leningrad, designated as the 54th Army. On the 14th, they saw the battlefield for the first time in a certain region called Smyotny. After the battle, it was decided that SC-122 should be 400 to 600 meters behind the front line. And time to time, it was shortened to 200 and 300 millimeters. In conclusion, the SC-122 is a great vehicle for long-range artillery. Its 122mm shell always decimated enemies and could even blow apart it. Pan a Tiger H1 into pieces if it had to, but sadly, nothing is documented on that. The SU-122 is best in its intended role, until the ISU series tanks came along with bigger barrels. Anyways, I hope that you like this video. I hope that you have a nice day and I see you soon. Oh, and also, please like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell. It'd be very nice and it'd be fair after sharing all this, this knowledge with you. Anyways, see you in the next video.